Hello. Hi, Andrea. I'm Kami. I write for the mamadiaries.com. Hi. So nice to see you today. Me so um, when I first saw this, what first caught my eye about the Cuphead show was the animation style. My eight-year-old is, he's crazy over this type of animation. He recently, he watched all those like Mickey Mouse shorts that use that like, like kind of like, you know, retro, like the 1930s feel to it. Mm -hmm. um, and he loved it. So I was really psyched because I knew that he would just, just love it. And he did, of course, you know. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. So I was wondering if you could talk about the animation techniques, how you were able to create that certain feel for the show. Um, sure. Well, so first of all, I'm really excited to hear that kids are responding to such a vintage throwback style. Like sometimes as, a, as an artist, you're kind of like, you know, you do things because you love them and some projects you work on because, you know, you know, it's, it's catnip for children. And then some projects you work on because they're just such lovely art projects. So this is kind of a, a really cool project that crosses both that it has appeal to children, but it has such an artistic flair through it. So um, yeah, that's really awesome to hear. He has great taste. Um, the, the animation style, I mean, the reason, the way you arrive at it is honestly through a lot of study. Like it, there was no um, kind of secret to that. I think it was just really embracing almost like the animation historian side of, of things that, you know, I love and, just I'm kind of like a nerd about that kind of stuff and I got this opportunity to just really dive in which I don't usually get to do on other projects you know um I really got to kind of tap into my love of like the beginning of animation the origins of animation the artistry behind it how you accomplish these things and so I just you know hit the books actually um I think um I just grabbed every kind of Disney archive I could Fleischer book anything that was telling me about the way they arrived at things back in the day and, and what their thinking was. I think I read a biography of Walt Disney that was like 34 hours long. Like it was just like <laughs> intense because I needed to, like I just, I was immersed, you know, I wanted, I wanted it to feel a certain way, but I also didn't want to alienate, you know, a new audience. And so there was this fine balance between um, making this an homage, uh, but still inviting uh, new audiences into it like you know kids kids now so that they wouldn't feel alienated by what we were making because a lot of the stuff that they were doing back then although it was awesome it was also super creepy and weird <laughs> like they it, it doesn't have the same you know uh it doesn't have the same uh impact it would have it, it had back then either that was the first time anybody was seeing anything move so it's like taking that the, the beauty of the 1930s and like understanding how they made it and then synthesizing that modern audience and um, bringing it to a space that, you know, was, was going to feel more inclusive to people just outside of um, animation as well uh, was kind of the goal and, and kind of how I treated going into the, the animation style, the, the look of it, the feel, all that kind of stuff. Um, that's where my head was at. Hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely does. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> Hi, Andrea. I'm Candy Olivares from CandyPalooza.com. It's Hi. awesome to speak with you. We're huge fans of the show. My 10-year-old has been waiting for the series for a long time. They were fans of the video game. And um, so one of the things that my 10-year-old said was that he was really, he really, obviously he loves the series and he can't wait for the rest of the episodes in the summer. And um, he loved how clean the animation was. And, you know, as you were speaking to Cami about the, you know, the 1930s style, um, as the art director for the series, you know, what, were there specific things that you wanted to bring out, you know, in the animated series from, you know, say the video game and, um, you know, to bring it all together? Yeah, we looked to the game a lot. Like the game did some really, really beautiful things. The biggest difference between what we were able to accomplish in the game is, is we just had different levers that needed to be pulled, right? Like for the game, for the art for a game, you're making a lot less art for a video game, you know? So you can actually do things. They actually really stuck to traditional methods because they, the volume of work they produced allowed them to do that. Um, for us, it's different, you know, to make an animated series, the amount of 
um, assets, artwork, unique pieces that need to be created are, you know, in the thousands. Um, so it, it's it's a very different thing to do. But being said, you know, the spirit of the game is absolutely on what we did. We wanted to retain as much of the game as we could. We just wanted to do it for a TV show, right? For 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 the narrative format, which entails different things. You have to get these characters to act and you have to get, the, you know, you have to get them to do things that they would never do in the game and take them to places that don't exist in the game. And so we're just pressing on like different artistic buttons than they are in the game, but it's all coming from the same spirit. And it's something that we wanted to feel like they come from the same world, but almost like they were shot on slightly different cameras. Or it's like, if, if back in the day you saw this in a, you would never see this in an arcade because it doesn't work. But that idea that like you could see this in one medium and then translates to another one in, in a really kind of cohesive way, allowing for the differences to still remain there because the diff I mean the differences needed to be there. Um, I like that your um, you said he was your son. Uh huh. My ten year old. Yeah, was kind of picked up on on how clean the animation is. Like yes. that is something we talked about a lot because we knew that fans like there's this like grittiness to the game and they, they can create things in a way that because it's paper like there's and the watercolor that you're seeing on screen it has this really nice kind of tactile quality to that we couldn't do that because obviously we had to use digital tools so we did instead with like up the ante we made the production value higher so that you as a consumer still felt of the media still felt like you were getting something that was top tier like premium for tv kind of thing um and so I, I, you know, that that's part of it. Some people don't like that it's clean, but <laughs> I think I think we were aiming at a modern audience, right? Like we were like as much as we love the video game, we were we had to make something new and something innovative and and push the envelope in our medium. And for they were pushing the envelope in the um, kind of game space, and I think we needed to push the envelope in the animated format. Beautiful job, thank you. Thank you. That's a great question. Hi, I'm Ashley Saunders from with ashleyandco.com. Thank you so much for Hi. taking the time to speak with me today. Um, of course. So my daughter, she's obsessed with creating and animation and stuff like that. And she wanted to know, when did you discover your love of animation and who were your greatest influences? Um, I, to be honest, I thought animation was real for a very long time. I had no... Like there was no distinction to me as a child between watching a movie uh, that was animated and like it, it only dawned on me quite like late, almost I'm like, wait, was I, what, what did I think was going on? But like for me, like this, I just, to me, The Little Mermaid was like a real, a real person. Like I had no, it was like no distinction for me. So I actually didn't have like early animation heroes because I didn't really understand what was going on I think but now as somebody who makes this stuff I actually think it's kind of a beautiful thing I, I was just accepting of this like wonderful reality of like this like these imaginative world that like the Disney animators were putting in front of me and I was just like yep that's what I want you know like <laughs> that that exists of course you know like it was so real to me um I would say like I I knew I wanted I think I knew I wanted to be in my mind, I remember thinking I wanted to be a director because I thought that's what it was. Um, so I had like, I think I was like in fifth grade, I went to like Universal Studios and like Disney, Florida. And I, everyone was like picking out their like Hollywood star that they were gonna, you know, like my sister picked like actress and my brother picked like the Terminator. And I was like, no, I want the director badge. Like, <laughs> cause I just, I thought that I could make these. Like that's what I thought was um, was what I was gonna do and what I wanted to do. And um, I always knew I could draw. So I, it was like this kind of like thing that came together that was like, I liked art and I liked making films and movies and um, almost like this is like the mixture of those two things. Animation is a mixture of those, of those um, two loves. I think as a, as a student and as, you know, when I finally discovered what animation really was, and how daunting and crazy and insane it was. And I almost quit college because of it. I was like very inspired then by um, 
actually like Mary Blair because I thought she was like the only person at the time that I could find that was like well she's in animation and she did all these like movies that I loved as a kid and that was like really inspiring to me as like as a college student when I was like figuring out what animation really was and how I could fit into the space so I would say early on she was probably my, one of my bigger influences I think I always looked more towards like female artists and um, female voices in this space and they were hard to find so I think when I when I like saw that it was just like oh that that could be me or like um you know like I really liked even this has nothing to do with animation but because I liked film Sofia Ford Coppola at the time was like coming out with films that were like very unique at the time and I was just like oh that you know there's that there's that kind of creative voice that's like I, I haven't seen before so for me I would say yeah it's it's not I wish I could say like I don't know as a kid I always looked up to Glenn Keane but honestly I just didn't even know he existed I just thought The Little Mermaid was real like and then only when I got a little bit older was I looking for those like female artistic and filmic like heroes that I think kind of pointed the needle forward I'm like oh, okay maybe that you know I could find uh, I could find my voice in something similar like they're doing it and I wish there were more at the time than Mary Blair, but that really was one of the first people that I really was like enamored with and her history at the Walt Disney Company. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I, I wish I had more, but there weren't that many, unfortunately, like female. Well, that's <laughs> why, like, you know, ladies <laughs> like you are, you know, you're making that change now. So we'll, the next generation will have plenty to look up to. Right, right. No, I think that's what's been wonderful about at least the last five years is that there are so many more um, women and, you know, in the space and girls who know who those are. Like, that's, you know, that's, that's really exciting that that's starting to shift. Hi, I'm Jana from Whiskey and Sunshine. Hi. And so, and, you know, kind of a almost tags on to Ashley's question, but not entirely, but um, do you have a favorite style of animation that you prefer to create or work with? I have like style ADD and I think that's because I, I actually have ADD. So like <laughs> for me, it's actually, it's been, it's been, um, animation has been really fun because of that, because one of the, you know, virtues of um, an animation artist is that they can shift and mold into different styles it's kind of part of the gig, you know, you have, you, when you're an illustrator or a fine artist, it's really about your own unique voice and finding your thing and finding your aesthetic and animation, you get to kind of step into, I, I look at it as like, uh, I don't know, like a dress up box and I get to like pick different, like different styles to wear and play with. And um, this is very different than what I did before this. I worked on a show called Unikitty that was like sparkle explosion and I loved it like the palettes were exciting and there was so much texture and it was exciting to me because I was like who's ever gonna let me make a world full of glitter and a cat that lives in a pink castle that looks like a cat like that's insane who's gonna let me do that I want to do that so that was really exciting to me for this for that reason and then stepping into Cuphead Cuphead was like really exciting because I got to flex this like this love that I have for the actual medium of animation like where it started, the history behind it, the kind of naturalistic pa palettes that come along with it. So I would say, and, and you know, next I really want to probably try something in the 3D space and push that. Like, I think for me, it's, it's less about the style and more about the world I feel like stepping into for about two to three years um, and how I'm going to wear that and how I want to like, play in that space and, and the kind of artistic skills I want to push within while I'm working on that specific show. I will say my heart beats a little faster for 2D because I think it's it's this like classic timeless medium. Um, I don't, you know, I've, I've tried watching Toy Story. I loved it when I was young and I look at it now and I'm like, that is terrifying to look at. Um, after all this time, it hasn't aged well, but then I look at a movie like 101 Dalmatians, which was probably made in like the 60s, and it's gorgeous. It's, it, it retains this like artistic beauty that, you know, a, a lot of the other animated mediums can't hold on to. So um, style-wise, I have ADD. I, I kind of love it all. As long as it's beautiful and fun to play with, I'm into it. But medium-wise, I have a special little place for, for 2D animation. 
Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hi, I'm Christy from Lights Camera Mom. Hi. And um, I'm again, like everyone else, my actually my my seven year old son, I think he binge watched the in, entire series on a Saturday, which I don't know if that makes me a bad parent or him having really good taste in animation, but he just he wanted to go for it. So we just blew through the whole uh, the whole series because we loved it. I love it. <laughs> um, but I know that you were, you know, and just kind of, again, playing off of Ashley's question a little bit, um, talking about your inspirations for animation um, when you were growing up. Um, so for in, considering it is International Women's Day and looking at, you know, inspiring young women, if, you know, if there are young women who are watching this and saying, you know what, I want to do that. I want to be an animator. What would be your advice to them as far as getting into the entertainment space, the animation space? Um, what kind of steps can they take to, to work on pursuing that? Um, I, I think, you know, I think when I was younger, I would have been like, work hard, work every day, get me to drawing. But I think the more I get into it now, I actually think it's the opposite. I actually think you have to play a lot. I think you have to keep that sense of play alive as long as you can. I think I was one of those kids that was like very aware of childhood. Like I did not want to grow up. I was like, yeah, I'll take my time. <laughs> Everyone's rushing to it. I'm good. I'm good. Um, and I think like that's kind of helped me in what I do, like retaining this like sense of creative playfulness. Um, I think it's super important. So as much as you have a goal of, you know, maybe maybe the goal is to get really good at drawing over a summer um, or to, I don't know, maybe shoot a little movie with your friends um, over, you know, a weekend. Like, I think that's the kind, if, if you're a kid, like that's the kind of things that I think you should explore at that point. Um, if you're trying to actually break into the industry, that that's a different that's a different thing, you know. Like I think school is important, learning is important, education and connections are important. But if if you're a kid and you're looking at this and thinking how how do I get into that when I'm older, I would say have fun, you know, enjoy things so that you can tell good stories later and um, retain that kind of creative play in either your artwork or films or TikToks, whatever you know, like just create and learn how to love to create and then toss that out and then do it again. Cause I think that's really what animation is. You know, it's a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of play. Um, and you have to really like hone in on, on those skill sets to kind of make things that are, you know deemed successful for other people to watch. Um, and, and when you're a creator in this space like that's really what it takes. You're, you're really putting yourself out there showing your ideas trying failing trying it again like um and, and through it all you have to kind of still retain that like hey this is fun you know I am you know at the end of the day like I'm hanging out with these two cups like and we're blowing up stuff like it's funny <laughs> you can't you know I, I try it is a job of course but at the same time I try to keep that perspective when I'm working on stuff and I think kids more than anyone should really really hold on to that perspective while they're thinking about maybe venturing into making animation that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Hi, Andrea. Hi. How are you? Good. Um, I was wondering, um, <laughs> we love the show. My kids love the game. They're six and nine years old. So yes, they like seeing things blown up and everything like that. <laughs> um, but um, I also live with my mother-in-law who is 82 years old. And she grew up in kind of like the golden age of animation. Mm -hmm. um, and so Cuphead really brings that out. Um, and we were kind of talking about the differences that, you know, Cuphead brings, because I know there's a lot of um, kind of negativity on the, the 30s animation when it comes to just like different, um, you know, kind of like these characters that sometimes we can portray as being too racy and stuff like that. And so I was just um, curious when you guys were developing, you know, the art and everything for this, did you guys ever have discussions of to like, we want to avoid this or we want to make this a little bit more lively, you know, kind of that scenario? Yeah, I think, I mean, we talked about that a lot. That was definitely something, it, it wasn't even, it was never an afterthought. It was always something that was like at the front of even making the show. It wasn't, I, 
obviously from my perspective, like it was interesting because I love 1930s animation and I love like 1940s animation. And sometimes I want to watch it and I watch it and I'm like, but that part that makes me feel so gross. Like that's really off putting. I'm like, it just like ruins the whole thing for me. And so my goal, my goal in a way with this was like, oh, how can we bring this beautiful art form to the screen without having these like cringe moments <laughs> that you're just kind of like, yeah, you know, like the whole vibe has been ruined. This kind of like tr racist trope or kind of, you know, sexist joke is, is kind of ruined the whole art form. And so for me, it was actually really exciting to bring the art form into, into a space where it was um, kind of free from that era you know, and, and just look at the art for what it was and really appreciate the animation for what it was. And if there was ever a point where we thought it wasn't, you know, if we were making a joke that, or making a joke or trying to convey something that was rooted in something that was problematic, we definitely discussed it. And either we found ways to not make it pro problematic or sometimes it wasn't even worth really putting on screen again or any version of it being on screen again. Um, so it was a really kind of um, heavily discussed uh, show in that in that form because we wanted we wanted to be not just sensitive but also really ha have it feel so that you can watch it and have that nostalgia come back and, and not feel icky about what you're watching all over again, right? Like that was a big uh, a big goal at least for me when when making the show. Did did your <laughs> okay that's good did did she like the show or was she just kind of like what yes. is this <laughs> so we actually watched she watched like the first two episodes and she was like oh my gosh I'm used to this type of animation right so but she was getting like the whole different topics my kids were laughing their heads off and she's kind of like what you know like yeah it's so different than what you're used to but you guys definitely yeah. hit it on the head with bringing that back and you know having that watercolor feel so I'm really glad that you guys were able to do that oh that's awesome yeah I that's been one of my favorite things like my own you know my mom and my niece watched it together I think my mom is like in her early 60s and my niece is 10 and they both like loved it equally and I was like that's that's not something I could get out of a lot of things you know like that it, it's really cross-generational and that's been one of the most exciting things about it Hi, Andrea. My name's Robin Hi. Davis from momthemagnificent.com. I think it's clear to say we're all big fans of your work. Um, you have done a beautiful job at bringing Cuphead and all these characters to life. So I'd love to know what's your favorite animated TV show or movie of all time? And is there a certain one that you keep looking back to for inspo as you create these fun characters? Oh my gosh, They're, the list is so long. I think I'm like, oddly I always say this because it has like the biggest and people are always surprised by this because I don't really make anything like this but the Batman animated series like has like stamped my childhood brain for some reason <laughs> I just remember running home and be like I gotta get, I gotta know what happened like it was like the first kind of animated series that really really um stuck with me but uh, in terms of like animation and genre, I mean, like I love um, a lot of the Miyazaki movies. I think they're wonderful and inspiring in so many different ways. Um, the Disney films like are, I think I, I'm like a total 90s kid. So obviously like Aladdin and Lion King and, you know, Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast, like those ruled my childhood. So, you know, they may not be the thing that I'm working on today, but it's like one of those things I'm like, yeah, those have a pretty big chunk of my childhood brain. Um, and then, you know, the stuff from the 1930s is interesting too, because as a kid, I, my, I think my mom would buy these like dollar store bin, really weird VHS tapes with like a ton of Fleischer cartoons and Betty Boops and like, I didn't even know what I was watching, but I was just so interested. And I, I think it's like, you know, uh, my love of animation definitely comes from like a, an array of like <laughs> all the stuff I watched as a kid. Cause even like now thinking about that, I'm like, yeah, I was like obsessed with really weird cartoons that people probably like my age had no idea about, but I was watching cause my mom like bought me all these like really obscure, like 
weird animation VHS tapes that, I don't know, are kind of creepy when you look back, but also really, really daring artistically. And so I think my, I have a lot of animated inspiration, like uh, things, I have a lot of things that inspire me from the animated space because I think uh, I loved it as a kid. I love it as an adult. Um, I think it's changing and evolving and, you know, every year or two, something comes out and I'm like, oh, that is the greatest thing I've seen in animation. <laughs> so I don't, I guess I'm just a fan. I wish I had a more like concise, but. No, that's great. So, All of it together of has brought you to where you are. Thank <laughs> Definitely. You. Yeah. It's a big old mixing pot for sure. <laughs> Hi, Andrea. Hi. I am Angie from my fan guide, and um, I don't see that it switched over yet, but uh, I have a question in regards to what your future looks like. I know you said you came from Unikitty and uh, now are over on the Cuphead show. So I wanted to know what your future plans look like, uh, if you're going to stay in animation, if you would like to get back to your uh, childhood dream of directing and also what does the future look like for the Cuphead show I know that Candy mentioned there will be more episodes and uh, I'm hoping that you'll give us uh, maybe a little more information on what we could see in the future yeah um, I'll start with me like I I think for me I, I want to I just want to keep making cool stuff like just put it in front of me and I'll make it like just give me the opportunity and I'll and I'll invite you into my kind of crazy world. And that's what was so exciting about Cuphead is like inviting people into this, that like opening of that cottage. I'm like, that's me, that's me on the screen. Like that's, that's my world, you know what I mean? And I think yeah. as long as people give me the opportunity to invite others into my space, I'm like so excited about that. Um, maybe, I don't know, I'm maybe I'll production design something else. Maybe I will get to direct sooner than later. I think that's definitely something I really, really want to do and aspire to do um, and working towards. So I think this whole, like, um, I'm definitely one of those, like, it's the journey, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, it's, not, it's, it's, not, it's like how, how you get there. And I'm not like, um, too focused on what's next I'm more focused about on what's uh what what's going to inspire me next what's going to open up that next door what's going to keep me playful what's going to keep me creative and hopefully getting to you know the place that I want to be so that I'm making the most creative kick-ass stuff that I can be proud of um in terms of the cuphead show I want to make more cuphead like I think it'd be super fun uh we don't I mean there's a drop two coming out in the summer and um I think everybody knows that there's like I'm, I'm still working on the show now like we're still trying to um finish up some really really exciting stuff but further than that I don't know um I hope people love it and watch it and I think that's the only way to actually get more cuts <laughs> like that's you know that's the reality of it like audience response is everything nowadays and so yeah. um I think it's very dependent on uh, the audience and if they want to see more of Cuphead we're very excited to bring them back well I hope that they do because we would yeah. love to see more in our house so <laughs> no I'm glad and I, I've heard that like a lot of people are replaying it so I'm like we gotta give the parents a break they can't watch the same thing over and over again like oh but like, we can <laughs> <laughs> I know it's like it's like something that happens but I'm I'm so happy that uh, uh, to hear from like you guys and you know, I know that people are watching it at home with their kids and their families. That's like so exciting when you're making it, you're kind of just like in this bubble and you're like, I hope people like it. I hope, <laughs> like, I hope there's a child out there that's waiting to see this. Um, there's a family that's waiting to see this. And so it's super, super awesome to, um, yeah, hear directly from you guys what's, what's going on in your homes and how your families are responding to it and how you are responding to it. Very exciting. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure speaking with you.